Hey guys, Drudder here. It's July 12th, 2019. Hello to Steemit and 3Speak, and also to YouTube. I will be uploading this there as well. And this video is about, not me, Drudder, but this man here, Edgar Gonzalez. And this is Edgar as I first met him, or recently after I first met him anyway, on uh, on Steemit. We became friends on the platform there, just uh, in the comments section. And in fact, that's the only way he and I have ever communicated is through the comments section there. So that's a testament to the Steemit system already right there. And um, <clears throat> we met when Edgar was posting about the conditions in his country, as he does every week, or uh, a couple of times every week. Anyway, he posts just uh, pictures and stories from his life and this is one of the pictures that caught my eye early in our friendship and it was a picture of him on the boat and he explained you know he doesn't complain but he does you know he, he does accurately you know list the problems that are going on around him he doesn't not in a woe is me kind of way but just in a <laughs> factual way uh, in both Spanish and sort of a broken translated English uh, he does he, he did mention on this day that he was there risking his life, basically. Um, he has um, some PTSD and some fatigue um, medical issues um, because of as a result of some past uh, fishing experiences and accidents that he's been involved in. Uh, he was a professional man until Venezuela fell apart and his country is really no more. Um, the structure that was there is just gone and he had a child as well as a baby when that happened and uh, he just completely lost his paycheck, lost his way of life, uh, everything around him crumbled, no more government services. Uh, he was living on his grandfather's farm that his father had left to him and recently had died and left him this uh, cassava farm. It's a, you know, it's a, a root vegetable that they grow a lot of down there, um, also known as tapioca starch. Uh, you may have heard of that, but he, his father grew that uh, cassava and left him the farm, and Edgar was using, you know, the farm and fishing to survive when I met him. He was feeding his child literally from, you know, fish that he had caught that day down at the ocean. He would, you know, he lives on an island off the coast of Venezuela, and he would just go to the coast and just... He didn't have a boat. He would he would have to barter with other people, uh, or borrow a boat, or sometimes just swim out to a piece of uh, wood out in the in the bay and try and fish off of that. And he almost drowned a few times. And it was just very matter of fact that he was presenting these stories about his life every day. And I was reading it, thinking, <laughs> if that <laughs> I've been hungry before. I've been hom homeless and hungry. And it was only a couple of years ago that I stabilized from that. Um, so I know what it's like, but I mean, to have to have children, dependents in your house that you're feeding by you know going out and finding food from 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 the ocean and from the land every day and just bringing it back and hopefully this keeps on happening so that your family doesn't die. That is scary, and um, it's really scary. And something happened to Edgar, and he blogged about it, and I read about it. <laughs> And I couldn't not do something, and that's when I started Mission Agua Possible. It's kind of a play, obviously, on Mission Impossible, and we sort of started it off that way, sort of um, with the movie theme kind of thing. Um, but really, it's just about uh, we can do it kind of thing. We can bring water to these people. We can get them water again. Because what happened was <laughs> Edgar blogged about it, his pump finally kicked the bucket for the last time. It had been repaired and been repaired and been patched and been jury-rigged and whatever you want to call it, but it was just hopeless at this point, completely, completely destroyed. Uh, the latest um, damage came as a result of the government's, you know, shutting off the power suddenly and the pump burned out, didn't have, you know, wasn't primed properly or something for that. So, <clears throat> he finally lost the pump completely. And the pump was what was um, powering the, uh, his neighborhood, basically. 
Um, you can see the condition of the, of the house in the background. This was a very nice neighborhood, uh, a nice neighborhood of Venezuela. Now you can see there's wires hanging and things are just, you know, they're just surviving there. They're camping basically in their own homes. They're camping now. They're just, all they have is what they can defend and what they've got on hand and what they can defend with, with what they have and, and their friends and their communities around them or they're relying on every, you know, everybody and uh, there's looting and there's government corruption and there's no more services available and yet yeah, taxes are still being collected and, and hyperinflation in the currency and just a terrible, terrible situation that these people talk about. And I could not not do something. I felt compelled to do something. I, I you know, I realized that I could and uh, I realized I could because we had the means to do that. We can collect the money for a new pump and that's what Mission Agua Apostle was about is collecting 1300 US dollars uh, worth of steam. We're not collecting the dollars, we're collecting the steam. And when we get that much steam, we will transfer it to Edgar via Steemit. And then there's, you know, it's all transparent. It's a very interesting and cool way of doing uh, fundraising, I think, because there can be no real shenanigans. If there is any shenanigans, someone can say, hey, there's something going on there. But so <clears throat> I thought it was a unique opportunity for charity, and I don't know why more uh, sort of fundraising stuff isn't done on Steemit and FreeSpeak and these kind of platforms. It's great um, because we can really help people um, effectively. You know, some charities are garbage. I'm not saying that they all are, but some charities are garbage, and I just I've never really felt comfortable doing anything with the ch with a lot of the established charities because I've seen the corruption that happens in there, but. Anyway, this is an opportunity to get someone the funds they need to buy that pump. And, you know, Edgar will follow through with that. <laughs> At least I think he will anyway. I believe he will. He's, he's a trustworthy guy. And if he doesn't, I'm sure the money is going to, would be going to someone that really needed it anyway. And it would find its way to the people that needed it. But I'm, I assume that it's going to be, there's going to be a pump. Um, purchased and it's going to be uh, you'll see it at the end of this clip there's a we have plans for the pump and um, uh, Edgar will blog about it but anyway this is him as the old pump came out that's an old a piece of the old pump and uh, that was from the week before that was him realizing he could not repair it and that sort of look at that look on his face that's trying to smile for the camera but a look of desperation. He has to go back to his family and his baby and say, sorry, there's no water, no more water coming out of the pipes anymore. <laughs> Not even water from our own land. We can't get water up from our own aquifer under our own farm anymore. So that was devastating to see, and I'm happy that we can finally do something about it. But this is week 43 now, and I'll sort of scroll through. I keep, a th I post a thread every week, and I post, um, a picture from Edgar's blog that week from Steemit. So this is uh, <clears throat> the following week is his child, also named Edgar, which I think is kind of cool. He's one year old now. Edgar uh, had to go to the hospital. Um, he had an infection and dehydration, I believe. And this is all paid, of course, out of pocket. There is no government hospital anymore. So anything that you get done and all those tubes, those bandages on there, everything, this is all costing a lot of money. And uh, with the hyperinflated, the currency is just destroyed. So a lot of people are bartering. And so <laughs> here's Edgar the next week, and he posted this, and he was very happy about it, obviously. This is from his land. Uh, this is what the thieves didn't get. This is what the drought didn't get. This is what the pests and the plagues didn't get. So he's got like several large avocados there, lots of bunches of, uh, he calls them like topicos or something, but anyways, bananas, I believe, uh, or maybe plantains, but anyway. <clears throat> and uh, he's got some uh, some citrus fruits there, some oranges and limes and things, and there's also some cassava as well on the left there, leaning up against the other bananas. So um, that's got a lot, he's got a lot of different proteins and a lot of different vitamins and nutrients in here. He's got almost everything you need. Uh, he can grow from the land and, and uh, he supplements that with a little bit of fish from the ocean. And I think that's pretty cool that he's able to do that. Uh, and he's surviving so far, but you know, drought comes from time to time and they, they're going through a bit of a, a, a wet time right now, at least for them anyway, at least enough so, enough so that he's as surviving. They're just scraping by. A lot of people around them are, are dead or 
have uh, fled the country. Six million people have left Venezuela in the past year or so, on foot mostly, um, in every direction, just getting the heck out of there because it is a nightmare uh, what the government is doing there, and um, it's, society has just fallen apart completely. So there's just little pockets that are that are working still, and you know. Um, most of it is has no access to water, so I would love to be able to get water at least to this section of one, you know, farm, basically a farm in a neighborhood. <clears throat> he was trading his water to other people, and now he's having to actually trade water from other people that have it, which, you know, is hard to do and very expensive. He's going to have to give up a lot of that, those bananas and those avocados and stuff just to get some drinking water, which is really, really stressful. Uh, here he is the next week. Uh, I can't even remember what that fruit's called. He's introduced me to so many different foods that I didn't know that there even were. Um, showing all kinds of... this is... Um, I think the banana plant when it's in flowering stage, these are the actual the banana flowers. I didn't know that's how it looked. Uh, there's another picture of the burned out pump. <clears throat> um, he does blog about the state of Venezuela. This is... Uh, the rubber has been... the tire has been taken and salvaged and used for something else and all the metal parts have been taken from underneath and uh, everything's just been looted None, nothing this is like a government program it was just about finished and uh, very expensive to do and all of a sudden they just abandoned it at the last minute and then it got like pillaged basically this is little Edgar's one year uh, birthday and he got a, a little cake there they <laughs> It's kind of sad they had to pool the ingredients from several different places and it took two weeks to get the ingredients together and a lot of cost, a lot of trading of different things, uh, food from the land and stuff like that, but he pulled together the ingredients so that his son could have a cake. And I, I tell it, you know, I tell the story sort of from a, <clears throat> a sad perspective and stuff, but, and Edgar never does. He never does, so, you know, you can read his blog yourself. He just, I'm just reading between the lines because I can see what's going on down there. Um, we'll skip through him. We don't have to look at all, all the pictures, but here he is um, with his friend's dog and uh, they're filling up water and this is water he's trading, I guess, or buying from this person so he can take back to his house to wash up the family and keep the family hydrated. Um, he's over at his mom's house here. This is her turtle pond. They, they can no longer afford the water for the pond, of course, so the turtles just get a little light misting every now and again to keep them alive, but The uh, the drought took a lot of his citrus crop this year, but some of it had survived, and this is what he harvested. He said that every year that there's not enough water, the trees get smaller, and um, you know they need proper watering in order to get any bigger or probably any stronger. So um, it's it's they're they're still pulling a little bit of fruit off of it, but um, it's getting less each time they harvest, and also the, a lot of this fruit is. Um, you know, to be traded for water and other things. Uh, there he is picking some oranges, I guess. That's some cassava root. Really nutritious stuff. Um, I don't know why we don't grow it here. Maybe it just doesn't grow. Um, lowering down coconuts out of the tree. Apparently, if you throw them, they break. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. So yeah, you do low. You do lower the coconuts there. Um, that's smart. A good harvest of bananas. He's happy about that. He got involved in some political protests. Um, a lot of people do turn out for these things and en masse because uh, they're just desperate. They're kind of, they don't know what else to do. They just show up when there's a big rally and they just they march and they're very patriotic. They believe in their country and it makes sense. This beautiful place. Uh, everything I've seen about Venezuela just looks gorgeous and the people are amazing too. <laughs> People are amazing. I mean, there's a lot of corruption and a lot of unfortunate stuff going on down there, and violence even and stuff, so that's not good, but that's, I don't think, the people, that's a consequence of what's, you know, society breaking down, basically. Uh, government has gone out of control and, and is blaming the people for everything, and it's not the people's fault. <laughs> the people are trying their best. It's weird government policies and uh, manipulation of the currency, for one thing. You can't manipulate currency and expect nothing to happen. So they've been doing that for years and the currency is just, has just fallen apart completely. And the people are hungry, basically. They're desperate and they're hungry. So they show up to these events doing what they can. 
And he posted this because he thought it was really cool how there was water on the ground, and that's unusual. It's, <laughs> I'm from Vancouver, so that doesn't look very interesting to me, this picture. But it was very interesting in Venezuela to see water on the ground, apparently. They, they got a little bit of water and they were happy. And, yeah, the government services situation is pretty bad. This is like, the, you know, the nice bathroom at the hospital, basically. One out of three sinks, and it was not really actually working, so... Um, he took a picture of one of his, I think it's his his, some of his neighbor's land, I guess. He's talking here about the state of public works. A lot of statues and um, monuments and things are, are falling to ruin. This one is, uh, people were, I guess, messing with the water supply, so they just cut it off. And uh, here he was <clears throat> too traumatized to go back in the water from some bad experience he had, almost died. But he um, traded some bananas. He brought some, some bananas down to the ocean, and he was pleased that uh, by helping some fishermen with their nets and giving them some bananas, they offered him a fish, which he fed the family with that day. Um, he works pretty hard. Uh, I won't include all the pictures here of all the work that he does, but I mean, and he doesn't even complain either. He just posts it as, you know, here's what I'm doing today. <laughs> Whoa. Um, he was pretty happy about this little, these catch of these little fish um, off the dock, I guess. And uh, here he is. This is his father's cassava plantation, and he's planted a new crop here and uh, hoping for rain, basically. The, the ground was very dry. He has irrigation set up, but no way to use it. Uh, you can see him behind, I think, here and a few other places. You can see hose, but it, um, it's not on. It's not working. Unfortunately, not yet. We we want to get it working. Here he is down at the ocean. Look at what could go wrong, right? An inner tube, a bunch of metal hooks and barbs and weights. Yeah, I'd swim out into the ocean to the riptide and start messing around trying to catch octopus and fish and fish with that. Nah, I don't think so. But yeah, he does venture back into the ocean when he's feeling up to it and. Uh, yeah, he often catches stuff. It's a beautiful place, this this Venezuela. I would love to go there someday. I mean, it is beautiful, and the land is a bounty, obviously. And uh, they haven't completely, you know, polluted and ruined it, or even really significantly polluted and ruined it, as far as I can tell. It seems quite nice there, uh, compared to a lot of places like China and, and even parts of the U.S. Um, so... Um, they are catching fish, and I, I, I think those fish are probably fairly nutritious, and I think the food that they're growing is probably fairly nutritious. It's just a matter of getting that to the people and distributing resources and having sort of a currency that works and makes sense and having the threat of war not looming all the time. And Yeah, here he is again. And uh, this another blog about talking about public works and stuff. I think this is university dorms or something, I think. The translation was rough, but I think this is a university dormitory that was basically like 80% built, and then they ran out of funding, or there was corruption or something, I think, and then it just sat idle, and now, like, it's overgrowing, and, like, loot, people looted out the pipes and all that kind of stuff, of course, so. Great. <laughs> you know, just that just keeps happening over and over and over and over again. And it must be so frustrating to see that kind of thing. And so what do you do? You turn to yourself. You try to keep um, self-sufficient as much as you can. And I understand that. I am a gardener and a, and a plant medicine and a food grower myself, too. So, you know, I, it's near and dear to me that these people are living off the land. But I'm scared for them because some of them are at risk of dying and some of them are dying. And a lot of them are dying. And in some of the harder hit areas, they are dying. And and, you know, all it'll take is another drought for there to be a sad story in this case, too, you know. I don't even want to, to talk about it or even to think about it, but something bad could happen, I'm sure, to the, Edgar and his family and his neighbor, little, you know, the, the neighborhood is, um, was kind of, is kind of dependent on each other, and they were depending on his water, but now that they're not, um, he has kind of, he has to borrow and from other people around him and stuff, and so it's really, it's just not an ideal situation, and as you know, water is life. We need water. We're made of water. We have to have water, and plants have to have water, too, to grow properly. So his land needs water, and his family needs water, and I really want to bring that to him. 
Here's Edgar standing in front of his friend's son's wall. Um, his friend has a young son who made this wall out of empty Coca-Cola bottles. Uh, Coca-Cola is kind of a luxury down there. It's expensive uh, and it's sort of a prestige thing to be able to drink that carbonated sugar water. But um, yeah, they made a wall out of bottles. So he was just talking about the ingenuity of the Venezuelan people. And here is some another example. Here is him actually fixing his friend's circuit board. He does, you know, some hobby <laughs> circuitry work on the side, I guess, just to, to keep things working because you can't buy things anymore. And if, even if you had the money, there isn't anything to buy at a lot of the stores. Um, another fishing hall. Um, these are people lined up in a very long line just to get propane. This is just like, you know, um, barbecue cans, basically, barbecue tanks. So they're just getting cooking fuel just so they can keep their, uh, that, that, that nothing, there's no utilities coming to the house. This is basically you're lining up to get your utilities and bring the utilities back to the house. That's your power, basically. This is your source of power is propane. And there's very long lines. And so here's Edgar saving money by grinding his own grains. I think this is corn being ground. He borrows the machine from a friend or goes over to his friends when he has corn and other grains to grind and does it there because it's so expensive. Anything processed is super expensive at the store. Um, he's showing me how nice and big his avocado was. <laughs> I was pretty impressed. I said, around here, that you can't even get an avocado that big and nice, but if you could, it would be like $5, $6 avocado. And finally, uh, the same avocado, avocado but uh, him showing me off the, the uh, showing me the uh, bananas that he's grown in. I said, are those going to go too ripe? And he said, no, those will be gone in a day. All the green ones will all be traded away and we'll eat the yellow ones and that'll be it. Gone. He, you know, he has to trade, that's basically his money, that's his income right there. He's a farmer basically right now. And he's not usually a farmer. His father was a farmer, but Ed, Edgar, you know, got an education and was a professional man. And that is all gone. And because the country is gone, so, you know, this is the pump that we want to get him. Uh, it's sort of the one he picked out. It's not the exact one, maybe, so it's something like this, um, maybe from from that line anyway, from that brand. It's Italian. It's 100% steel. That's the kind of pump that will last for several years. It's not uh, sort of a disposable. Um, put it in there and it'll break down in a couple of years. We need something that will last a little bit because we don't, you know, we don't know when the repairman can come around, kind of thing. So I want to get him a decent pump anyway. And this is a this is a decent pump. So thirteen hundred dollars U.S. and that will get us the pump and the installation in Venezuela. And he lives on the island of Margarita specifically. And so this is uh, I thought uh, a unique way to sort of make a sort of a slideshow video clip about Mishinagua possible. I've normally stuck to just blog posts and. Some weeks we do really well. We get upvotes, you know, ten dollars even sometimes more, and sometimes we get less than a dollar in upvotes. And then there's also uh, direct donations. People send it to me, and I up uh, and I um, hold that as a separate sort of like separate from the rest of my Steam kind of uh, all kept uh, kept apart. And um, I'm amassing that and holding that thirteen hundred. Well once it gets to 1300 anyway, holding that until 1300 and then transferring it to Edgar. And um, so direct donations that come to me. Uh, also, uh, each week we keep track of how much they are and who they come from. So it's all um, kept track of. There's no way to be anonymous, unfortunately, with this. But um, if you want to upvote or if you want to send a direct donation, that's basically how you can contribute to Mission Agua Possible. And um, once again, I don't know Edgar. I actually, the, the only times I've ever communicated with him are through Steam it uh, in the comments section. We have no other way of communicating so far. Uh, we probably should chat on email or something at some point, but um, internet keeps going down in his country all the time. Uh, if he's got power, sometimes he's got internet but not power, or one or the other, because uh, they both kind of go out. Um, and so we just chat when we can in the comments section, basically, on, on Steam it. Um, and, that, and that's working, and I think that's going to be fine. I'm just saying, I don't know Edgar, he's um, he's just someone I met through 
this process, and it's been really cool to get to know him and get to know Venezuela through him. He does post a lot, so I'll put his blog post, uh, his blog link down below as well, so you can follow him as well and upvote his posts directly. That helps him too as well, and uh, he funds um, he funds his uh, his life as well through his his um, his interactions on Steemit, his income here on the blockchain. So it's been really incredible to use the blockchain, not only to get to know him, but to find out about this problem, identify the problem, and then realize that this blockchain can be the solution. So I think it's really cool, and that's why I'm excited to upload this video to 3Speak and get the information right onto the blockchain, get that out there, and in a different format than I'm normally getting it out there. So I think this will be... Um, this will be a good post, and this is week 43, so um, every Saturday on my blog on Drutter you will see an update on uh, the last week worth of um, upvotes and the last week worth of direct donations. So uh, thank you very much for your support at Mission Agua Possible. Thanks on behalf of Edgar, and thank you from me, Drutter. Talk to you guys soon.